So I had this idea for a long while that GMOs were bad. Kind of fell into this whole meme that was passing through the liberal community. That was before I realized the level of dishonesty that comes with certain types of political agendas like this one. So let's talk about GMOs. Let's get into it. The thing that broke me out of that mindset of GMOs bad was listening to a speech by Richard Dawkins where he talked about them and how they weren't the bane of humanity. So I did a little more research on it and it turns out that most of the arguments against GMOs are propagandistic. The whole thing started with some guy who got sued by a company for using their patented seeds and he decided to sink the company. So he made a documentary about how evil this giant corporation is. Everybody can get on board with how evil giant corporations are. The video was actually fascinating to watch because you'll genuinely see propaganda in it. It's called Seeds of Death and it was produced by Gary Null. He makes a number of unsubstantiated claims in the documentary about how GMOs are killing people and how evil Monsanto is and all kinds of stuff. So it was really interesting to watch. And after that one came out, it started this big scare which led to certain smaller countries banning GMOs, which led to more documentaries coming out and saying, look at all these small countries that have banned GMOs. Then of course, the whole law came up in the US about labeling GMO foods. Here's my problem. If the food didn't have this ridiculous bullshit stigma attached to it, I wouldn't have a problem with labeling the food as GMO or non-GMO. But the fact that there's this big scare out there means people are gonna stop buying GMOs, which just aren't harmful to your health. The scare is over nothing. So there's my first reason to not label GMO foods as GMO. My second reason is because non-GMO foods can just as easily be labeled as non-GMO. If you really want non-GMO food, you can just look for that label. But the one thing that got me so much about the whole bill was the fact that it was a partisan thing. Democrats were generally for the bill, Republicans were generally against it. There is science to be studied here. It isn't about political parties. The Republicans were either just going against the Democrats to be contrary, or they were supporting the giant corporation. And that really bothers me. These people are so divisive. But I'm not getting into politics right now. Let's take a look at this walking vegan stereotype called the happy healthy vegan and get meta while we see what he has to say about seeing what Neil deGrasse Tyson has to say about GMOs. Now before we actually watch the clip, I just want to point out that this dude seems like a plenty nice guy. Like I said, he goes a little over the top with the vegan stereotype, like to a hilarious degree. But outside of that and the GMO thing, he seems like the kind of guy I'd like to know. We probably agree on a lot of other things. In fact, I even agree that being vegetarian would be better for the planet. That's vegetarian, not vegan. I don't see the problem with using animal products. In fact, I don't have a problem with eating animals either. I just think the earth would be better off if we didn't have a billion animals adding to the climate change problem, not to mention the problem of treating the animals in a humane way. And that could be pretty well resolved by increasing vegetarianism. We don't have to be full vegan. It's something I strive to be someday. I can already tell we agree that climate change is a big problem. So if this guy sees this video, I don't want him to take offense at anything I say about him. Just take it as constructive criticism. Okay, let's check out the clip. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. I was just watching a video of Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about genetically modified foods. I was quite excited to see what he had to say. He's a huge influence. Well, anyway, let's see what Neil had to say here about GMO foods. It must be something really insightful and hard-hitting. What most people don't know, but they should, is that practically every food you buy in a store for consumption by humans is genetically modified food. Well, Neil, there's no doubt you're a very accomplished astrophysicist, one of the leading in your field in the world, but genetically modified foods, far, far away from your wheelhouse here, no. See, this is what I find fascinating about this guy. What do you think he would have said if he agreed with everything Neil said on the subject? Would he have said, Neil, I appreciate you coming out here and talking about how bad GMOs are, but it's outside your wheelhouse there, buddy. You are an astrophysicist, not a biologist. No. He would have praised him for being so right, 
He would have said, I'm so glad we have somebody who knows what they're talking about. Finally, a scientist on our side in this debate. Now he's partially right. It's outside of Neil's professional wheelhouse. He's an astrophysicist, not a biologist, but he has a science PhD. You think he didn't take biology classes? You think he doesn't know exactly how this works? You think he couldn't read the research papers and understand the math and calculations they're using? He's plenty qualified to take part in a discussion on this subject. You know who I don't think is qualified? You. I don't know what your education is in. I don't know what you do for a living. So it's very possible I'm wrong. But I'm gonna venture a guess and say that Neil is more qualified to speak on this subject than you are. I will retract that if you show me your PhD in biology. You list all the fruit and all the vegetables and ask yourself, is there a wild counterpart to this? If there is, it's not as large, it's not as sweet, it's not as juicy, and it has way more seeds in it. We have systematically, genetically modified all the foods, the vegetables and animals that we have eaten ever since we cultivated them. It's called artificial selection. That's how we genetically modify them. Well, yes, artificial selection is the process of humans selecting which traits they want to breed into future generations of plants or animals. Genetic modification is a high-tech process that hasn't been going on for hundreds or thousands of years. It involves selecting the genes from one species and putting them, putting them into a whole nother species in a way that would never occur naturally. And I'm wondering why that's a problem. Why is it objectively worse to combine DNA in a lab instead of through artificial selection? I haven't heard an argument against it. I understand the distinction he's making here. For context, take a look at this. Here's a modern, typical banana. The kind of banana you'll find in any store. Now here's a natural banana. It's hard and round and full of seeds. And from what I've heard, it tastes disgusting. It isn't like the bananas we know and love. So this guy's argument is that taking DNA from some other organism, like an apple or something, and putting it in the DNA of corn to make it grow bigger or make it resistant to different types of bugs is objectively worse than breeding the corn selectively to accomplish the exact same goal. Why does it naturally have to come from corn? I don't understand the argument here. Here's a great example. A scientist knew about an arctic flounder that could survive at really cold, freezing temperatures, and he wanted to combine that trait of survival in cold temperatures with tomatoes, making them more frost resistant. So that's what they did. They took a gene from two creatures that would never mate ever in the wild, a flounder, which is a fish, and a tomato. So now, yeah, you got some animal genes in that tomato to make it more frost resistant. Oh, I see. You can't be fully vegan if animal DNA was used to make your tomatoes more frost resistant. Okay, I understand. But here's the issue. Hypothetically speaking, if DNA was retrieved in a completely humane way, say, for example, just getting some cell scrapings or stem cells or something, and the animal could go free, would you still be against it? What if the fish DNA was only required for the first set of tomatoes? After that, you could use the seeds from the new tomatoes to continue the line. Then from that moment on, the fish wouldn't even have to exist, and we could still benefit from its genes. What about then? Would you still steer clear of the tomatoes? Just because they had the DNA of an animal? I'm guessing the answer is yes. Being vegan, I seriously doubt this guy would be okay with animal DNA being in his food at all. Absolutely no animal product, even chicken eggs, no milk. To me, that feels like the extreme fringe of the extreme fringe. I'm not here to argue against veganism, but I am here to argue that climate change is getting its claws into us right now, and we need to find a way to improve crop yields to continue to feed the planet. Planet, sometimes in extreme conditions. We're gonna have to make food more frost resistant. We have no option. Climate change is here. There is no reversing it by making everybody become vegan with the snap of a finger. We need to adapt now which means finding some way to adapt our food to grow in harsher conditions. And as I explained earlier, there's nothing inherently bad about GMOs. It all comes back to superstition about natural over unnatural, and not knowing if animal genes were used to make that food. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Discord, Patreon, and all social media. Thanks for watching, guys.